Hi, my name is Philip Glendennan, and this is Lab 2, focusing on the motion of a falling object taking place at Georgia Tech in Physics 2211, Section M. In this lab or experiment, we are meant to observe the motion of a falling object, and then from there, we are supposed to use Tracker and GlowScript to compare the observed position to two different predicted positions, one with the force of gravity and without the drag force, and one with both the force of gravity and the force of the drag on the ball. In this lab, because the object is not supposed to fall like a rock and is supposed to fall slightly slower, I chose to roll up a piece of paper into a ball. In doing this, the paper ball had a mass of 4.5 grams and a diameter of 0 .04445 meters. Continuing on, I dropped the paper ball from a height of 86 inches or 2.1844 meters. Because of this, we know that there was an initial velocity of zero, which will influence things later on. Here on the screen is the demonstration of Tracker both without axes and with an origin of an axis. The ball is falling in the negative y direction. Because we are looking to analyze the net force and the change in position and velocity, we can return to the basic Newton's second law equation, as well as our known equations for updating position with updated velocity and certain specific time steps. In doing this, we can analyze our change in both velocity and position over time. If the change in position is extremely flat or not curved, we know that velocity is constant and that there is not a net force. Because the object will most likely not reach terminal velocity in this lab, the object, in my opinion, will continually accelerate due to the force of gravity and drag. This claim of a not straight, or thus a curved change in position versus time graph, is proven by the glow script model shown. In this specific model, we omitted drag force. Thus, the force on the ball is solely dependent on the acceleration due to gravity and the mass of the paper ball. Thus, when we see the amount of position covered in the negative y direction increasing with each time step, we know that the velocity is also increasing in the negative y direction. Before moving on to the glow script model that depicted both the effects of gravity and drag force, we need to understand how drag differs between situations. To begin, drag force is generally proportional to velocity and is always in the opposite direction of the motion. For this lab, as the ball is falling in the negative y direction, the drag force is in the positive y direction. From this, we get the equation for drag force e equals negative bv, where b is a constant that varies. Due to many different factors such as humidity, thickness of the air, and specific shape of the system, in this case the system is a paper ball, the value of b could be very wide ranging in different situations. For this specific lab, we are focusing on the effects of turbulent drag, which is where the drag force is proportional to the square velocity, thus drag equals negative bv squared. After that discussion, we can continue to the closed grip model, which includes drag force, which is where we actually encountered some problems. To find the specific turbulent drag force, we know that the square of the speed is what we are trying to compare to or that the drag force is proportional to. Thus, the value of B or the, and the value of FD, which is drag force, are depending on the magnitude of velocity because speed is the scalar velocity. However, Glowscript was having errors in doing so. Regardless if I did magnitude of ball dot vel times the magnitude of ball dot vel, or did mag ball that vel squared, or even try creating a new entry for speed where I did that as the magnitude of velocity, and then using it, it repeatedly produced the same position as gravity with no drag, which we know makes zero sense. Because we know this is impossible, I transitioned to a guess and check method to find the correct value for b. In doing this, I started at around 0 .002 and ended at a point around 0 .008, I ended up finding the value of b equals 0 .00615, and this was further proven by when I incorporated this into my glow script, or the correct equation in glow script, it produced the same in position as the observed position, or extremely close. With the data and models we produced, we can create a position versus time graph to show the three values. In doing this, we can now accurately see the degree to which the effect of drag force has on the change in the position of the ball not necessarily velocity in this graph, but further could be. Although we may not even need the drag force included in the line graph to show the discrepancy, as we could just use the observed and predicted with no drag, it shows that there are minute changes in our surroundings that influence the path of the ball. For example, in the observed position graph, there are instances where I could have slightly misclicked here and there in tracker, which all falls back on human error. Also, because the ball was not in a perfect circle, Falling a certain way could have caused the drag to act in a different manner. 
However, ignoring all of these potential confounding variables, we can see the trends on the graph showing increasing velocity in the negative y direction. Because it is not constantly changing an equal amount with each time step, we know that at all points there is a net force of some kind, which we'll get to more to in the last slide, and what that means. Going into the what does it mean and what ifs of this lab, we know for a fact that the system, or the paper ball, never reached terminal velocity. For an object to do this, the force of the drag, as well as gravity, need to be completely equivalent or equal, so there is a net force of zero. At this point, when the net force is zero and the object is still falling, it has reached terminal velocity, where it has no potential for accelerating anymore after that moment. Thus, its speed cannot increase anymore. Also, because the velocity versus time graphs of the models are increasing throughout the entire time in the negative y direction, we know that velocity is changing, thus it cannot be a terminal velocity. Also, if we were to throw the ball down, I believe it would reach terminal velocity quicker because the curve is more rounded, but its specific terminal velocity does not change. We can see this by the changing initial velocity still in the negative y direction, even if we started at an initial velocity of 0, negative 5, 0. The velocity's ball, ball's velocity will continuously change, even if it does not reach terminal velocity yet. Thank you.